Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have an interesting improper integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x multiplied by the absolute value of sine of x dx. So I say this is interesting because if I were to exclude the absolute value sign, that's actually a very common calculus two problem where you need to utilize integration by parts. So with that being the case, but because we have a absolute value sign, that actually does make things a little bit different slash challenging at the same time since we're actually dealing with, you know, positives with that absolute value sign included. So the way we're going to do this is actually utilizing some Laplace transforms. I actually seen one solution where you can actually break this up into like a sum of integrals, which um, it's an interesting method, but I, th I think the Laplace transform is like another take that I feel is a <laughs> even better. Don't mean to brag about that like that, but I'm not the one that came up with the solution. I think it's interesting, just period, that We'll be utilizing Laplace transform, but not only that, there'll also be some complex analysis involved, so really complex numbers utilizing Euler's formula specifically that will actually just make some things happen. And the whole process behind this thing is actually it's more of a plug in a value and then we actually get the final answer what we want. So with that out of the way, why don't we actually jump right in? So I think it's worth noting that if I write the definition of the Laplace transform, so f of t and then for s, t being in the time variable and s being in the complex frequency domain. So that variable, we know that th that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power negative s times t, and then multiply by f of t, then dt. So with that out of the way, so we know that, so I'll write this as capital I. So capital I in this case is basically the same thing as saying we're taking the Laplace transform of the absolute value of sine of x, where we actually plug in our value for s is going to equal one. So that's basically the goal of what we're doing here. And we know that absolute value of sine of x is actually a periodic function. It has a period of pi. So with this being the case, we say that specifically for a period periodic function, then we have that for our function, of course, is gonna be for pi, but in standard terms of the definition, we'll say that um, for a function f of x with period a, then we have that the formula for the Laplace transform that says that um, f of x, and then of course with our variable for s, is gonna equal to the following formula. So I have one divided by one minus e to the power negative s times a, and then multiply by the integral from zero to a, of e to the power negative s times x multiplied by f of x and then dx. So I actually like to go over the proof over this formula, but instead of writing this down on the board, I'm actually gonna take this into another perspective where it looks like I'm actually like running a commentary channel, which that's actually a first for the channel itself. And that's probably something you'll see sometime in the future, in future videos where I'll probably impl implement that type of format. So it's something new just to try to the channel, basically is what I'm trying to, um, you know, up upgrade that sort of quality. So with that, I leave you to the proof of this statement right here. So before we continue on with the evaluation, let's actually prove the Laplace transform for the periodic functions. So the statement itself says that if you let f be a real function, so map from the reals to the reals, and also it's a periodic function as well, such that it has a periodicity, we'll call this capital T. So the formula states that the Laplace transform of f of t, so lowercase t is a time variable and then of s, s being in the complex frequency domain, then that's the entire formula is gonna equal to one divided by one minus e to the power negative s times capital T, multiplied by the integral from zero to capital T of e to the power negative s times uh, lowercase t and then times your function f of t dt. The proof itself is actually pretty simple from there, so you actually utilize the definition of the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform f of t of s, we're going to set that equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power negative s times lowercase t, and then times your function f of t dt. So what you would do is that because it's a periodic function, we can actually break this up like as a sum of integrals. So that means it's an infinite sum. So because it's an improper integral, so we can say that our lower index is k is equal to 0. We go all the way up to infinity of now our bounds is going to be split up so term wise so that means our lower bound we're going to start with k times capital t and then the upper bound would be k plus one quantity times capital t of that integrate that same from before 
So next is we, we can now utilize a uh, u substitution. We'll let u equals t subtract k times capital T. So of course, you would have to solve for t, we would want to solve for t by itself, lowercase t by itself. And also if you differentiate both sides, so that would have to mean that du is going to equal dt, you substitute that back in. So now our new integral, what we have so far is gonna be the infinite sum from k is equal to zero to infinity. And our new bounce is gonna be from zero to capital T of e to the power negative s multiply by, so now we have u plus k times capital T, and then the function input's gonna change, so it's gonna be f of u plus k times capital T and then du, okay? So because of the exponent or the exponential function, we can actually split this up, so we have that it's e times negative s times u, multiply by e to the power negative s times k times capital T. And then since but of course, f is a periodic function, we could actually just go back to the variable we originally started, so we just replace that for u, so f of u, then du. And then because, so the function itself, or the integral, does not depend on, um, specifically for e to the power negative s times k times capital T, because it does, doesn't have anything for the variable, u, we can actually factor that outside, so we have a sum of that, so the sum k is equal to zero to infinity of e to the power negative s times k times capital T, and you see the integral over there. Then we notice that specifically from our sum, it's actually a geometric series since e to the negative sk, it actually follows it falls within our condition such that the, it's convergent such that it's strictly less than one, the absolute value that is strictly less than one. So we can actually utilize that definition and also the integral still doesn't uh, stay the same. Well, later on we can actually, it's because of the dummy variable, but we can actually change it back to lowercase t. So because of that geometric series, we have that now, we utilize that, we have one divided by one minus e to the power negative s times capital T, and then our integral zero to capital T of e to the negative s uh, times lowercase t of f of t dt. So there's your little proof, and I think that's an interesting thing to see there. So with that out of the way, let's actually now go back to our um, continue on with the evaluation. Okay, so now with that statement out of the way proven, so we can now continue on with the evaluation. So really, we actually want to take into our focus for the absolute value of sine of x. We want to take that Laplace transform. We'll, fo we'll focus on s equal to one. We're actually gonna plug that value back into n. So we'll save that for later. So now putting this back together, so the Laplace transform for the absolute value of sine of x, and then for the variable s, so that means what we have is gonna be, this is equal to one divided by one minus e to the negative s. And then, so we have a period, periodicity of pi as mentioned. So we're gonna substitute that for pi. And then now we have that our integral is gonna be from zero to pi of e to the negative s times x and then multiply by our function, which is the absolute value of sine of x and then dx. Okay, so now our main goal specifically is to calculate this integral. So then let's now move on. So zero to pi of e to the power negative s times x of the absolute value of sine of x and then dx. And actually, because that x ranges from zero to pi and it's all positive, then that would have to mean that the absolute value of sine of x is simply just going to equal to just sine of x without the absolute value. So we're actually just gonna put this back in over here, x and then sine of x and then multiply by dx. Okay, and so to continue forward, this is where we're actually gonna be utilizing some complex numbers. So, so now to keep a note, so that means I have that Euler's formula e to the power i times x. We know that, of course, that's going to equal to cosine of x and then add this with i times sine of x. And another thing to, you know, debunk even further is that if I were to take the imaginary part of Euler's formula, the imaginary of e to the power i at i times x is basically equal to sine of x. Okay, so with that out of the way, so now let's actually go back into here and substitute everything. So that basically sine of x is gonna be replaced with here. So that means we're taking the imaginary of the entire integral over there. So that means, um, let me just now put this back into different color. So now I have the imaginary of the integral from zero to pi of e to the power negative s times x and then multiply by e to the power i times x. And then, so close this off with dx. And of course, if I wanna simplify things even further, so it's the imaginary of zero to pi of e and then so negative so the quantity s minus i and then times x and then dx all right 
So this is a pretty standard, um, it's an easy calculation to take the integral of. So you would just apply the U substitution. That's not that difficult. So what we have is we have the imaginary of now, this is going to be negative E and then multiply by negative. So S minus I quantity and then times X and then divide it by S minus I. And of course we evaluate this from our bounds to zero to pi which of course, if I plug in pi, so that's just the way it is, just plug pi. If I plug in zero, so that means that's actually gonna be one. And what I'll do is I'll actually interchange it. So because zero is leading with the negative, and then, um, so that means that will actually lead to, because subtract and subtract, so that means that's the positive. So the zero term evaluate is gonna come first and then subtract with the pi is basically what I'm trying to get at. So now we have the imaginary of one subtract e to the negative s times pi and then i'm just going to break this up for the multiplicity of the exponential function so e to the negative s times pi and then multiply by e to the negative or actually just positive i times pi and then divided by s minus i okay so close that off and then we know that of course euler's identity um, e to the power i or e to the power i times pi is basically just evaluated a cosine of pi at this with i times sine of pi so of course cosine of pi is basically just going to be evaluated negative one and then sine of pi is just going to be equal zero so that means this is just negative one over here so so far just to reiterate everything back so we're our integral that we're focusing over here so zero to pi um, of e to the negative s s times x and n times the absolute value of psi of x is so far we have reestablished to say that that is going to equal to the imaginary of one and then plus e to the power negative s times pi and then divided by s um, subtract i and then what i could do is to make the simplification easier let's actually multiply its conjugates on the bottom so s minus i and then multiply with s plus i so now of course that's actually looking at, at a difference of squares so now what we have is so the imaginary and then over here is that i'll get so one plus e to the power s time negative s times pi and then divided by or not divided by multiply by s plus i our bottom is going to be s squared and then plus one okay and then to reestablish, so that means i already take the imaginary part and then now we're actually going back to the original formula that we were trying to solve for so the laplace transform of the absolute value of sine of x and then of s we haven't plugged anything yet so that means we have one divided by one minus e to the negative s times pi and so we would take the imaginary part of that entire thing over here which is here multiply that together so what we have so far is that this is actually going to be so we have one plus e to the negative s times pi and then divided by s squared plus one and then multiply by here so we have one subtract e to the power negative s times pi and then to reduce things a little bit interesting what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to multiply and divide uh, e to the power s times pi so by doing that so now what we have now is that this is going to be so um what is it e to the power s times pi and then add this with one I didn't mean to write the plus on the exponent part so plus one and then divided by so s squared plus one and then multiply by e to the s pi and then subtract one okay and so uh, just to make sure the imaginary part is actually just the imaginary part of this entire thing is one plus e to the power negative s times pi divided by s squared plus one i forgot to write that down here so let me actually just put that there just so people don't ask too many questions so basically the last step is now let's just plug s equals one into our entire thing so let's actually switch to a final marker uh, a different marker for our final evaluation and of course this being the easy step we just plug s equals one into this entire thing over here and so therefore the final answer is simply just going to be e to the power pi and then add this with one then divide it by so two so that's two here and then multiply by e to the power pi and then subtract one and so with that, that is our final answer to our improper integral utilizing the uh, absolute value of sine of x. What turns what used to be a uh, calculus to typical problem has been changed into something more challenging and very intriguing. So just like that, there you have it. And yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.